1 Samuel 21. Then came David to Nob. That's the first time that word shows up. It's important because this is a city of priests in the area of Benjamin. So we're in the tabernacle where the ark is, where the priests are. Used to be in Shiloh. And uh, in the area of Benjamin, that because Saul is on Benjamin, but the ark is moving closer and closer to Jerusalem. To Ahimelech, the priest. And Ahimelech was afraid at the meeting, that's the first time that word shows up, of David. Everybody today speak about meeting, business meeting. I got a meeting appointment. I got, and Bible references, here's a priest and here's David, a type of Christ, meeting together. Now, why is he afraid? Well, David's a warrior, and he's got his men with him. Is there trouble? Is there a problem? Why are you here with your troops? And said unto him, Why art thou why art thou alone? Well, he's not alone, he's got his men. And no man with thee. It's kind of weird because he's David said, Well, I got these men here. He probably got a few men. And now the military remember David was a captain of a military force under Saul. And David said to him, like the priest, now there's gonna be a lie. The king has commanded me a business and has said unto me, let no man know anything of the business whereabout I send thee. No, that's not true. And what I have commanded thee, and I have appointed my servants to such and such a place. No, he's on the run. Of, what Saul wants, Saul wants him dead. Now David's on the run. He's afraid. He's scared. There's a king after him with a whole military group. Now, therefore, what is under thy hand? Give me five loaves of bread in my hand, or what there is present. Now he goes, "What's underneath that? What's underneath your hand?" Well, oh, all right, it's bread. Give me five of those loaves of bread. Now, what's going to be is this is going to be the show bread in verse six. And let's look at Leviticus 24 8. Got a couple chapters here to look at. And the priest has the showbread. Leviticus 24, verse 8. You need to look what's going on here. And this is the showbread in verse 5. And thou shalt take fine flour and bake 12 cakes thereof. Two tenths deer shall be in one cake. And I shall set them in two rows, six on a row, upon the pure table before the Lord. So this is in the holy place. On that table, there's six and six. Now shall put frankincense on upon each roll, and it may be on the bread for a memorial, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Now that memorial matches the Lord's Supper. Ours is a memorial of what Christ has done and what he's going to do. Every Sabbath. Well, that's the seventh day. He shall set it in order before the Lord continually, being taken from the children of Israel by an everlasting covenant. It shall be Aaron's and his sons, all the priests, and they shall eat it in the holy place, For is most holy unto him of the offerings of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statute. All right, that bread is to go on the table. It's to be baked a particular way. It's to have frankincense, one of the gifts to baby Jesus. A memorial which reminds us of our Lord's Supper. Every Sabbath, every seventh day is to be taken off and fresh. And it's to be for Aaron. Now, that's important. So, let's see, we got a couple more chapters here, but back in 21, this is what's under thy hand. It says five loaves of bread. Now, already we'll look at so we know. Verse 6 says the show bread. We know what it is, verse 6. So, this is the seventh day, the Sabbath. 
And if David asks for five loaves, there are seven left. Five representing death. Seven representing complete. David's on the death march here. We read that that bread is to put on the seventh day. It's for Aaron and his sons. So David is in Noph, and there is a tabernacle, and Ahimelech has come out of the holy place. And David runs into him. And he sees he's got the 12 loaves of bread there. What do you got? All right, give it to me. And the priest answered David said, There is no common bread under my hand. This is showbread. But there is hallowed bread. Exodus 25.30. But this is important. Exodus 25.30. Because we're going to establish something about David. No man but Jesus Christ. I can't open. Exodus 25, 30. And thou shalt set upon the table. This is after the destruction of the table. Show bread before me always. And right before, you know, the spoons and the dishes and all that. That table was only designed for this bread. It is in the holy place, that table. It is hallowed bread. It is not common bread. It has no lemon. I'm lemon. It has no leaven. It has had frankincense. It has the particular measurement for God said to make it. It is hollow bread. If the young men have kept themselves at least from women, where is that? We read in Leviticus 24, 9, it is for Aaron and his sons only. Why would this guy throw out, well, you're men, now see there are men there with, with David. Now this does show up in Exodus nineteen fifteen, but it has nothing to do with the showbread. Exodus nineteen fifteen, And this is where Israel is going to meet God in chapter 20. In 1915, they're standing at the Mount of Sinai. And God commands Moses to tell the people, and he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. Now that's not the showbread. That's when God's going to give them the law. He's going to speak from that mountain. That bread we read in Leviticus 24, 9 has nothing to do with anybody else. We'll see that in a moment. And it has nothing to do with men with women. And notice it's weird that it says by the answer, have kept themselves least from women. It doesn't say wives, women. Well, that, that's a broad statement. And David answered the priest and said unto him, Of truth, you just lied in verse 2. You lied to the priest. Of truth, women have been kept from us about these three days since I came out. And the vessels of the young men are holy. Now that's where you get over there in Corinthians, Paul says, We are vessels. Paul takes that quote right out of the Old Testament. Not talking about clay pots. He's not talking about urns. urns. He's talking about people, us. And the bread is a manner common. That bread that's underneath his hands. Yet though it was sanctified this day in the vessel. Well, you know, Ahimelech. You just put the fresh bread on that table and you're carrying this out. So now it's okay. Scripture and verse, David. Let's go back to Leviticus 24.9. Let's see again. Repeat what the scripture said. Because this is the only place where I would think that David's only messed with the scripture. Because he's afraid. He's on the run. 
24 9 the rule of the showbread and it shall be Aaron's and his sons and they shall eat it in the holy place for it is most holy unto him of the offerings of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statute that belongs to Aaron and his sons yeah he's bringing it out <laughs> So you see what the condition of Israel is right now. It, it's all messed up. But David said, you know what? you got new bread on that table. That's been sanctified. That's in the holy place. You stepped outside with that bread so we can have it. So the priest gave him hallowed bread. <laughs> see what the Holy Spirit said there? For there was no bread there but the chill bread. That was taken from before the Lord to be to put hot in the day when it was taken away. And we read back there in Leviticus 24, 8, that was a Sabbath day. So, David is eating that bread. Let's see Matthew 12, 4. Matthew 12, 4. Now remember, this is on the Sabbath day. This is going on. Now that bread was sitting on the table. I don't know if the priest could go up and take a piece of it. While it's sitting on that table. All right, 12 4. Uh, all right, let's start verse 2. Ready? But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. They're taking the wheat and they're crushing it between their fingers and they're eating. The Pharisees jump up and say, Well, it's the Sabbath day. You can't do that. All right, let's see what Jesus has to answer. But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was a hungered and they that were with him? How he entered into the house of God. He stepped into that tabernacle. Ahimelech did not come out. No one was allowed in that tabernacle, but David walks in that tabernacle. Others tried to offer their incense to the Lord, and the Lord spot him with leprosy. The three sons of, I mean, the two sons of Aaron go in there with strange fire, and pfft, God gave them fire. David has now entered into, that only matches Jesus Christ, the office, he's been anointed king, but he's not king yet. He is definitely a prophet. And now he's all entered into the office of priest. Prophet, priest, and king, and only Jesus Christ holds that office. And later on, we're going to get to the sure mercies of David. How he entered into the house of God. No one but the priests were to be allowed in there. One man tried and he got leprosy. And he died with leprosy. And they say that they have found his grave. And upon his grave, Uzzah's grave, there's a warning that this man died of, of leprosy. You keep away from him. Keep away from his dead body. How he entered in the house of God on the Sabbath day, Pharisees. If you go, see, Jesus said, have you read? What day did David show up? When, uh, uh, what's his name? When Ahimelech has changed that bread and Leviticus says that was to be the Sabbath day. David walks and walks and comes to the tabernacle. And now he's going to eat bread on the Sabbath day. You guys haven't checked your scriptures. And David is the office of the king of the kingdom of the Jews. He's one of them big, big of the big bigs of the Israel race, along with Moses and Aaron. I mean, Abraham and Elijah. How he entered the house of God and did eat the showbread. Which was not lawful for him to eat. Neither for them that were with him, but only for the priests. So what did David do? He ate it. It's only for the priests. Jesus said he wasn't supposed to do that, but he did. 
and God did not strike him down and God did not kill him. And he lied to the priest. Verse 2. So the priest, verse 6, gave him hallow bread, the showbread, for there was no bread there but the showbread that was taken from before the Lord to be to put hot in the day when it was taken away. That's the Sabbath day. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained, the only place that word shows up, before the Lord, and his name was Doeg. Now, commentaries suppose that Ahimelech and David knew that Doeg was there and knew he was a servant of Saul. Kind of okay, but Ahimelech did not know David was in trouble, though. And they would say Ahimelech did not have time to go run into his house and get David bread because Doeg was there and it caused all kinds of trouble. Problem. Ahimelech did not know David was on the run. He believed the lie in verse 2, so why would they be afraid of Doeg? Now, what is the reason Doeg's there? Because Doeg is going to come up later on, and he's going to do a mischievous deed ordered by Saul. We'll get to that later, Lord willing. But he's a valuable player because he's watching what's going on. He knows who David is. And look who he is. He's an Edomite, an enemy of Israel. That is of Isaac's other son, Esau, who Jacob stole, they say, who Jacob swindled his father out of the birthright, and those children of Esau, or called Edom, have never forgotten them. And there's an entire book of your Bible, Obadiah, that completely condemns Edom. And when Babylon came in, and took Jerusalem and carried away captives back to Babylon. Daniel and all, and all the people there. The Edomites, when the Jews were on the run, the Edomites caught the Jews at the River Jordan and caught them up and bound them and brought them to Babylon and said, Hey, look, we got some Jews for you. What will you give us? And Obadiah speaks about that. He said, You know what? You curse Israel, I'm going to curse you. And Doag, 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 whatever his name is, will be a type of Judas and the Antichrist. And we'll read about him next. The chiefest of the herdmen that belonged to Saul. Now, was the herd the asses? I mean, Saul still got the herd of, it, of his dad's. Has he retained the, the, the asses? David's always been a shepherd of the sheep. The Bible says about an ass, if you don't redeem an ass with a with a lamb, you're to break his neck. You know what unsaved people are called in the Bible? They're called asses. If you don't get redeemed of the blood of the lamb, you're to break the neck which causes death. You break the neck of a living animal or human, it's death. You redeem it or there's death. That's mankind. So that's a side note that's going to come back. And we'll get to that story when we get there. And David said to him, And is there not here under thy hand a spear or sword? And I got the bread. I need a weapon. He ain't got no weapon. What happened to Jonathan's sword that he gave him? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me. Man, he's on the run. You know why he didn't have his weapons with him? He could not go back to the, I don't know, it was a castle or wherever Saul lived. But he could not go into Saul's, I'm going to say castle. We represent kingdom castles and all that. So I'll say castle. I could be wrong. But he could not go back in the castle. Why? Because Saul's holding that javelin and Saul's ready to kill him. So at the moment that Jonathan says, you know, you need to go in peace. My father hates you. My father wants you dead. He takes off. Now, Jonathan couldn't give him the bow and arrows. He gave the bow and arrows to that little lad, and he said, take these back. To he should have told that lad, here, you go back and leave me those arrows. i got to give them to David. David's completely defenseless. And when David sees Doag, he's afraid, not Ahimelech. 
because he knows that Doag is a servant of Saul, and he knows Doag's going to go back and tell Saul, I saw him in Nob. Now, he doesn't know that Doag's going to tell him the whole story. So he says, I need a sword of weapons, because the king's business required haste. That's a lie. That's a lie. I got Romans 3, 4. Let's see what that is. I don't know if it's an earlier note or school notes I had. 3, 4. Romans 3, 4. Oh, here we go. Romans 3, 4. God forbid, let God be true, but every man a liar. As is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. <laughs> David and Ahimelech are going to pay dearly, and it's going to be David's fault. Because David didn't tell the truth. And you need to realize when you lie, you're going to pay. And it will cost others. There is no holy lie. There is no pulpit lie. There is no white lie. There is no green lie or, pop it or polka dotted lies. A lie is a lie. And out of the pulpits of America today, there, there are lies. And I learned that early when I'd gone to different churches. And, you know, when I sat under the first preacher, I hear his stories. Wow. And I went to the next church. I heard the same stories. And it's amazing how this preacher did exactly what that preacher did. And then I started going to Bible school, and I was taught that preachers have their stories that they will tell from the pulpit, and they will put, and that's a lie. That's a lie. Say, I got a story to illustrate what we're learning in the Bible. Don't put you as doing it. Preachers are going to stand before God, and they're going to find out that their ministry, that their, their, their talk, their, their, their preaching, their teaching may have been lies. And lies never do any good. Now, David's lie here is to protect himself. Rahab's lie was to protect the spies. And that other woman who put the, 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 the men in the well, that was to protect those two men's lives. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest, the only time that word shows up, in the valley of Elah. Oh, look at that. Now we know what the valley is called. Behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth. I don't know why. Behind the ephah. That's what the high priest won. That's what, there's the high priest outfit. And behind that is a sword. Now, it doesn't say it was in the tabernacle or not. It, those two things weren't to be in the tabernacle unless that ephod was worn. Now, later on, Solomon's temple and then Herod's temple, they will have buildings and, and uh, rooms and storage places for all stuff like that. If thou wilt take that, take it. For there is no other save that here. We don't have any weapons here. There are no weapons in the church of house, even in a kingdom atmosphere, where God tells his people, go and fight and kill them all to take a kingdom. Goliath's swords is sitting there and no one's using it. And David said, there is none like that Give it me. The size, the design. Remember, Goliath was one of the giants. Is it a big, huge sword? We'll see in a moment. And David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. That's where Goliath was from. David runs from. Israel runs from Saul into the Philistine area. He's on the run. 
because of fear. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Achish, is not this David the king of the land? Saul knew it. Samuel knew it. The Philistines know it. That throne belongs to David. Though he's not on it. Watch this. Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands? They even knew the celebration of David and Saul. Don't worry. News gets around if you've got cable television or radio or not. It gets around. Rahab knew exactly what happened at the Red Sea. And there was no news media. They may have something. And David laid up these words in his heart. Somehow it got back to David what was going on. David, those men are reporting to Achish. That you're the king and you slew 10,000 of us. You're a warrior and a king. We need to be afraid of you. Now, Goliath being from Gath, what is he going to be afraid of Achish? Maybe they're friends. Maybe they're going to put revenge for killing Goliath. Maybe they'll call his four brothers. Now, watch what David does. David laid up these words in his heart and was so afraid. Man, he's afraid of everybody right now. He's afraid of Achish and he's afraid of Saul. He's not going to make proper decisions. He needs to go somewhere and get off alone with God. And he will. He was so afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. And he changed his behavior. First time that word shows up. Look where these words are first showing up. Before them. So... <laughs> About face of what he is. And feigned. That's the first time that word shows. It means to pretend. It means to act. It means a script. Or a skit. Or a play. He feigned himself. For victory. He feigned himself for BBS, for the Christmas pageant, for the parents to see the children of the Sunday school. He put a Hollywood acting on. See, Hollywood is no different from BBS. Hollywood is no different from the youth group when they both pretend to be what they're not to be. And if you get your, you or your church or anybody in your church and they get up there and say, I'm Joseph, I'm Jonah, I'm Jesus, you are a liar. How dare you have anybody in your church proclaim to be Moses, to pro proclaim Jesus, or even to be proclaimed as Paul. Nobody can match those men, and especially Jesus Christ, you liar. And then you get up there and preach against Hollywood and the actors and actresses. And it goes right on at your pulpit. Move the, matter of fact, move the pulpit in another area of the, of the church so we can bring our crap for all the parents to see and all the people. Crap. Framed himself mad in their hands. A lunatic. Or, or he's, he's, that's not David. And Scrabble, that's the first time and last time that word shows up. It's the scrape or scratch. He's turned himself into an animal, and at the door of the palace or whatever it is of Achan, he's scratching at the door like a dog who wants to come in, like a cat wants to come into the house, banging on the doors. That's not it. On the doors of the gate of the city, and let his spittle, that's the first time that shows up, fall down upon his beard. Now, Jesus will take his spittle and he'll open the eyes of a blind man. 
David takes his spit and lets it all drip. Gets it all in his beard. And he's got his hands probably all bloody. And the nails are broken. He's going to... I'm going crazy. That's not who David is. Then said Achish unto his servants. Lo, ye see the man is mad. Wherefore then have you brought him to me? Look at that man. Look at him. Look at that idiot. Watch. Have I need of a madman that ye have brought this fellow to play? Run that right back to fame. What's it called? Isn't it called a play? There it is. Bible word. A place where you change who you are and what you're not. Scripture with scripture. He's played the madman. So David the actor, his part is to be a madman. It's not a madman. Well, he's pretending to be. To play the madman in my presence, shall this fellow come into my house? This door, this gate is closed. What would have made them to recognize David who he was? Uh, you got to wonder. They say, you know, that's David. They've been singing about him. I wonder if it has to do with that sword of Goliath. He's from Gath. One day know that what that sword is. Here comes David. He's carrying that sword. It's got to be big. Because that giant was a giant. I would think he would have a giant sword. Or it was designed such a way that, hey, isn't that Goliath's sword right there? And there's only one person that would have Goliath's sword, but the one that killed Goliath, the one that got on top of the body of, of Goliath and pulled that sword out and cut off his head, that's got to be David. Did you hear about David? You know he's the king over there? You know they sung, he killed 10,000 people, and then David gets feared. <laughs> They're going to try to kill me like Saul's trying to kill me. <laughs> Poor David. Poor David. And he's going to get one day the throne. And one day Jesus Christ is going to seat on this throne of David one day. David's a wonder. 